guys, Howard here with Bitch by the Stones from the fabulous Sticky Fingers album. Uh, it's such a great album. There's so many cool riffs on it. I've done uh, tutorials for Brown Sugar, Can't You Hear Me Knocking. I might make my way through most of the album eventually. This is one of my favorite tracks on the album. The horns are just slamming and uh, Jagger's just tearing it up. Uh, Keith does a lot of uh, Chuck Berry style ad-libs and drop-ins, improvisations, and of course the solo is based heavily on that style of playing. It's just the A pentatonic scale in the box position and then one linear form or long form of it. So I'll map those out for you if I don't forget. But, you know, I would encourage you on this one to just improvise. You know, don't try to learn what he's doing note for note. You can cop a couple of things, you know, that type of stuff in the Chuck Berry song. Uh, but what I'm covering here is the song, the main guitar part, which is actually played by Mick Taylor, okay? And I'll talk about a couple of different approaches to the uh, B section of the song when we get there. But let's get started. So the first thing we want to do, we're on the A string and we're sliding to the seventh fret using your ring finger and we're just kind of sliding from nowhere land, okay? But if you want to be specific, you can slide from five to seven, if that makes more sense. But it does sound cool to hit that throw right out the gate. Gives it a little meat, right? So once you land that note, you can see on the tab, I'm moving to the fifth fret on the D string, okay? And then we're going to connect with the uh, seventh fret on the D string, and we're going to go back and forth between those two, but we're going to include the open A string in that now. And there's a little bit of subtle muting going on back here to give it that chunk. You know, you don't want it to be. So just lightly rest uh, the side of your hand on the bridge and. And uh, so isolating that D string, we have. Now, of course, once we do that slide, connect with the G string, we want to bring in the open A string for that. So we have. Then what we do is we bar across the D, the G, and the B at the seventh fret. And then we move to the fifth fret. Same three strings. And you want to make that staccato, right? So you want to mute in between to deaden those strings and then let the fifth fret ring out. Right? And then what we want to do, we do want to slide specifically from five to seven this time when we come back around, okay? So I went from five to seven, hit the uh, D string at the fifth fret again. So what I did that time on the D string was just but once again connecting with that open A string. So we have very cool riff, right? And then we've got a pickup note on the seventh fret on the A string, moving back to the A string. So what's happening there is we pick the A string, then I know you can see it on the tab, but barring across the D string and the G string at the fifth fret, we hit both of those strings, but we're going to hammer the D string to the seventh fret. Now we're not hammering both strings, just the one string, but we want to hear both strings ring through. And then back to five and five. So we have and back to seven on the A string. Then the fifth fret on the top string, the sixth string, and glissando off of that. So putting the whole riff together nice and slow, we have. right now what you hear Mick Taylor do on the recording uh, is really emphasized live a little bit more at least you can hear it more but he comes back he slides back to that A string and that sort of takes the place I don't want to say entirely takes the place of the slide on the A string 
but let me play it for you and I think you'll get the idea. <laughs> Once he slides off of that note initially, he slides back to it, then 7th fret on the A string, and you make your way through the riffs. So it winds up sounding like this. Let me do that again real slow. So after that initial slide out the gate, when he starts the riff, uh, that's how he loops it, okay, and Jagger starts singing. So you come off of the riff the last time and uh, we play this little E minor chord, which actually, theoretically, winds up making an A9 chord because it's rooted in A, right? But that's just theory stuff. So anyway, we come off of the riff and we catch that, right? And it's on the upbeat. Very cool. And just slide off of it, okay? Chuck Berry boogie part and that's the section I'll talk about uh, that you can play a couple of different ways I mean obviously they've got more than one guitar going on here uh, but when you listen to the recording you'll hear that Mick Taylor goes into that standard boogie thing and you can especially hear it live uh, a good uh, video to check out is I think it's 1972 in Texas the Stones live and so you can really uh, hear Mick Taylor's part a little bit clearer but anyway, what we're dealing with is a D chord, a G chord, and an A chord. And I'll talk about how you can just sort of play those bashing it out. Uh, but what we have is that standard Chuck Berry boogie pattern. I'm on the D chord, which you can see on the tab. Four times, and then we move to G. Three on the uh, top string, five on the next string. Just twice, and then up to A, same two strings. So we have four, two, two. Now you can see I came back to the D and played that four times. So the overall picture is four, two, two, and then four again on D. to a B power chord at the second fret on the A and the D strings. And we basically play this little pocket. And then keep your finger right there. Bring in the open E string, the sixth string. And so we're playing the chord twice. Give a little bluesy bend to the third fret on the sixth string and then back to the uh, power chord. So we have... And you start the riff again, okay? So let me play that whole part for you. Right back to the riff. 
So uh, let's talk about another way that you can play that. If you want, you can just bash out the D chord, the G chord, and the A chord. <laughs> So that's kind of cool if you have two guitar players, one guy can just sort of bash out those chords and let them ring while the other guy's really playing a boogie. Over that. power chord or a whole B bar chord and take it all the way up to E while the other guy plays. You know, just chunk it up because when you have two guitars, it's just too cool. And as you can see out the gate, I played the uh, the riff an octave higher because that's where the horns come in. And that's just something that I always used to do live because we didn't have a horn section, right? <laughs> so if you've got two guitar players or even if you don't, it's cool to jump up and play that an octave higher. So wherever you spot the horns in the song, uh, you can play that, okay? So let me do that nice and slow for you. Pretty fun stuff to play, okay? So there you go with uh, Bitch by the Stones from Sticky Fingers. I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, all the best to everyone.